Hello and welcome to Weekend Sports on Trust TV. I am Emmanuel Fashemi. The international break is over. The leagues are back. Actions right there in the top five leagues in Europe, also in the Nigerian Premier League, and a lot happened within the week. Uh, some fantastic results, some fantastic games, some celebrations happened within the week in Nigeria and outside Nigeria. The African Super League uh, finally got underway on Friday, and we have our own Enyiba in that uh, competition who will be playing this weekend, and uh, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of events happened within the week and some will happen today in the Europe uh, top five leagues. We have fixtures, mat watering fixtures, and then in the Nigerian Professional Football League, match the four. A lot of actions have been lined up in match the four of the Nigerian Premier Football League. All of these and many more on weekend sports uh, with me, Emmanuel Fashemi, and also have a guest that will be joining me via Zoom from Mina, Niger State. He's a regular on Trust TV uh, sports program and he will be joining me on Wicked Sports. But before we go straight to Mina, Niger State to bring on Isaac Omedeji, uh, let's start with this fantastic story. It happened within the weekend. MFM finally, finally lands their first ever women basketball title they did that in a very fashionable style beating nigerian customs in the final 60 uh, 64 to 60 it ended 64 for mfm 60 for nigerian custom it was a close call uh, in that particular competition and for mfm they've qualified for the continent also alongside air warriors and then the, the custom ladies and also by blue ways who uh, the air warriors defeated in the other game is it uh Baeza for Baeza Blue Ways, fantastic team, young ladies who are doing very well. But for uh, the MFM, this is the first time they will be winning the Nigerian Women's Basket League. Uh, the, uh, the last uh, time out when we had the league, they came close, but First Bank actually didn't give them that chance to win the title. But now, after they went back uh, to the drawing board, they looked at the loopholes in the team and they corrected it two years the women's league was not up and running because of the uh, issues surrounding the presidency of the Nigerian Basketball Federation. But a long run, we had the league and now MFM are champions. Okay, let's bring Isaac Omidiji straight on the show this morning. Isaac, I know you are smiling. Finally, we have our league. The, that is the women's basketball league up and running. And for MFM, they did a very very marvelous, superb job uh, in that uh, final four competition played in uh, Lagos and they came tops. They didn't lose any game at all and they beat the Nigerian, almighty Nigerian customs in the final. Okay, Isaac, are you there? Yes, if you can hear me, Manuel. Okay, I can hear yes. you now. Good morning and thank you for this opportunity again, Emmanuel. And congratulations to MFM uh, women, uh, popularly called the Church Girls. Remember that the last time that this league was played, they got to the finals and they lost to the uh, Air Women. This time around, they also got to the finals but improved on their last performance by getting the title. So winning the title uh, was a very good one for them. And remember that it was a very fiercely contested final. It even went into overtime because the regulations time ended 58-58 uh, because at a point the custom women came back and made the MFN ladies to even lost a 12 point lead and that took it to uh, overtime and it was at the overtime that they won uh, that particular uh, final by 64 to 60 and that was a great one. And for MFN I think we know them that they've been doing well in football before they went underground. Uh, this time around, again, in basketball, the women are trying to make a name and carve a niche for themselves. And that's very important. But that is not even really my joy. My joy is that I've also agreed this time around to sponsor the Division One of the Women Basketball League, not just the top flight. Now they are going a step further to sponsor the Division One of the Women Basketball League. So kudos to the sponsors, kudos to the uh, Nigeria Basketball Federation. And let's hope and see that this will also propel women basketball in the country that has suffered a lot of personal interest clashes and that has progressed its development over the years.
Yes, uh, that would have uh, personal interests have actually hampered the progression of basketball in Nigeria. And we know after football, basketball is the next biggest sport uh, that you can think of uh, in the world, in Nigeria particularly. And right, right now, I think every other sport is also doing, uh, trying to catch up with football, basketball, and the other sport, golf, uh, that is uh, at there. But good one for MFM. Congratulations to them and congratulations to the MBBF for putting up a uh, this uh, good organization for the women's uh, basketball league and for the uh, for the sponsors good one that now they have extended that sponsorship to the division one and division two women's basketball league is a good is a welcome development we want to see private investors invest in our sports that is the way to go and that is what it is and for the minister he's doing all he can to see that we get uh, these uh, private investors investing in sports uh, in nigeria okay uh, let's go away from the basketball story and we will we talk a lot <laughs> we are going to talk a lot about the women on the sports today because uh, uh, if you look at it very well for quite some time now the women has been making nigerian proud so we're going to talk a lot of sports that involve women today all right let's leave that story and now let's talk about the super falcons uh, of Nigeria, we know what uh, what happened at the last World Cup. Now they they will be coming back after quite some time after the World Cup. Now, but this time around in the Olympic qualifiers against the Ethiopian ladies, uh, we know for the last two uh, for the past two uh, Olympic games, Super Falcons was in there. The last time I would lost to Cote d'Ivoire, we didn't go to the Tokyo Olympics. But this time around, we have opportunity to redeem our media image. But now we have a date to keep with uh, the Ethiopians ladies at Addis Ababa. These Super Falcons, they will be jetting out of this country on Sunday. The home base players will join up uh, with the foreign uh, base player. Who uh, The foreign base player will join the home base player right there at Addis Ababa. As you can see on your screen, we have the list of uh, Super Falcons players uh, invited. We have uh, the likes of Chama Kanadoze, Tochukwe Lohi, Monle Oyono. That is one of the home base players invited for this uh, particular encounter. We have defenders of Sinachi Ohale, who is in Mexico right now. We have Comfort for Lauren Shaw, who is in US. We have Lua Tos in Demehi. We have Michelle Aloze. We have Nico Payne, uh, Jumoke Alani, and Rofiat in Muran. And then in the midfield, we have ever present Halima Tuanide, Peace Fe, and then Chris Uchebe, a fantastic player for Esa Befinka, Rashida Ajibade, Tony Payne, Regina Otu. The Payne sisters are back together. And then in the forwards, we have uh, Omar Rinshola, Ababajide, a new invitee who plays uh, in uh, Spain. We have uh, Fioma Onomono from US. We have Asisa Toshola from Spain, also Barcelona Femino. And then we have Uche Nakano, and then Gift Monday. Okpayemi, Ajakahe, another home base uh, players invited. The first leg will be uh, coming up on Wednesday, October 25th, right there at uh, Addis Ababa. And then the reverse fixture a week later, it will be in Abuja, 31st of October, precisely. That should be Tuesday. They will now come and keep a date with the Super Falcons in the reverse uh, fixture. So a lot uh, for the Super Falcons, uh, Isaac Omidiji, we were not at the last Olympics. Now, these guys know what is at stake. Well, when they play the games that they are supposed to play to qualify, we don't know if they know what is at stake or not. That we didn't qualify doesn't make them to be serious uh, for the qualification. Because why didn't we even qualify in the last edition? It was due to so many, so many problems in the team. And the fact that the Falcons at the point were thinking they were indefensible and that is not true and if you look at what is even happening in the qualifiers so far some big countries have been beaten by smaller countries on the continent so we shouldn't be wary of utopia so that we will not be in the shoes of some of the bigger countries that have been beaten by lesser countries on paper years past Ethiopia should even give us problems we should even have invited foreign based players to even prosecute the game against Ethiopia but this is the present reality now we need to take it very seriously uh, we need to ensure that the technical crew are well motivated. We need to ensure that the NFF is not playing politics uh, with the uh, technical crew and the players. I'm actually wondering why our own Ashley Plumter was not actually invited. The lady who has just moved to from Leicester to Saudi Arabia and she scored an attribute even as a defender. She was very marvelous for us at the World Cup. So I was thinking uh, that continuity would be sustained. But hey, 
there are so many good players for the supporters of Nigeria, even on the shores of the country. Remember, years past, we only have few women players who are playing outside the shores of this country. Majority of them were domiciled in the country, but the game has changed. Majority of them are now outside the shores of this country. Uh, we still have good ones coming up. So, looking deep, we must take this seriously. We must understand that there are no longer minors in women football in the continent of Africa. Bigger countries are being busy. And don't forget, the Super Falcons are no longer the powerhouse, the sole powerhouse of uh, women football on the continent. Morocco is coming up seriously. South Africa is not giving in at all. Cameroon will also not let it off. So we must continue to maintain what we have maintained and also have in the back of our mind that it will not continue to be easy and rosy for us as Nigerians, as it has always been in the past years. Now other African countries have woken up. They've invested in women football. They have gotten more experience. Most of their players are also players outside the shores of the continent. So they have everything on ground now to take you to the, the cleaners if care is not taken. So the sport accounts and the technical crew must do everything possible to ensure that concentration is top notched in all the qualifiers. Yes, concentration is top notch in all the qualifier we had uh, in the first round. <laughs> the Mauritania, uh, um, Satoma and Principe withdrew. Where well, that is for the Falconets, and then uh, for uh, the Mauritania ladies that were supposed to play the Super Falcons, they also withdrew. And the Ethiopian ladies defeated Cape Verde seven nil aggregate to uh, set up uh, an encounter against the Super Falcons. That match will be coming up on Wednesday, twenty fifth, and the reverse fixture will be thirty first Tuesday, October. Uh, in the city of Abuja. So let's see what Super Falcons will do right there. But for the home base players, they will be leaving the shores of this country on Sunday and the foreign base stars will join them up in Addis Ababa. For our viewers, time will come for you to uh, at least to call in on the show and make your, uh, and make your own contributions on some of the topics and probably uh, the big fixtures that we'll be having in the MPFL in Europe. So you will, will have time. When the time comes, you call into the program to make your contributions. Okay, let's uh, move ahead uh, and talk about another lady. This time around, like I said, we are going to talk about the women more on the show, uh, this lovely weekend uh, sports. Uh, now we'll talk about another fantastic uh, player, good player, ever since she came on board for the Super Falcons, she has been uh, superb for the Super Falcons at the back line for the team. Now, Onome B has come out to speed fire to say nobody can force her to retire from football. Don't force me to retire. That is coming from uh, Onome B, the 40-year-old uh, Super Falcons uh, defender. I, uh, well, uh, for her, she said when her body tells her to retire, that is when she's going to retire. I don't know if you agree with her, Isaac. Well, uh, Emmanuel Onome Ebi has given a lot to the country. She has served us passionately. She has given everything to the green, white, green jersey. Now, we must not forget that. She has to be respected. But Onome Ebi also needs to understand when it is time to call it quits. You know, you live when your vision is still loud. And that is what I expect Onome Ebi to do. Now, those who are calling for her retirement are also not out of place. But we shouldn't force her actually to retire. Let the technical crew continue to determine if she's fit enough to be invited. At 40, I believe she has given everything to the super faculties and to the country. And remember now she's playing for Nigeria Rattles. And one of the highest best paid player in the league, even not the highest, she's going to be receiving 1.5 million a month in Nigeria Rattles. At 40, she should be paving way for the younger ones to be coming up. At 40, she should be encouraging younger ones to emulate what she has done, which is years and years of wonderful and patriotic performances for the Super Falcons of Nigeria. It is not wrong to call for a retirement, but we must do it respectfully. Let it be that, yes, the fact that the, uh, the younger crew will no longer see the reason why to bring her in because they are younger players. If at 40 you are not willing to go, then the player who is 25 and doing very well, when we, she have opportunity to play. I remember at the World Cup, she uh, only had some cameo appearances. She was not a starter at the World Cup. She was just giving cameo appearances. And that's what she's supposed to have even been given at, that st at this stage of her career. So she should start seeing uh, the opportunity of transcending from the playing pitch to probably administration or coaching. 
That is why I expect Wanobi Ebina. She has done very well for Nigeria, no doubt about it. She must be respected, but she also must know when to leave. Leave when your vision is very, very loud. Don't leave when you are forced to leave because you are no longer performing at the top level. Okay, uh, he should leave uh, there now when the ovation is still out for uh, no, maybe a uh, 10 uh, African uh, uh, championship uh, for the Super Falcons and six World Cup, a record for a, a woman player, both male and female, attending six FIFA World Cup tournament. Massive one for her. And let's see uh, when her body will tell her to retire from football. And probably she just signed for uh, Nigeria Test in and they became the highest paid uh, female footballer for in, in, in the NWFL. So for no maybe until it's time, she can just um, uh, uh, leave and then go uh, go and do what she needs to do. Okay, let's uh, leave that story quickly and talk about um, uh, the African uh, Super League uh, and now. Any bad player, any bad defend, uh, striker say they will not disappoint Nigeria in the African Super League that kicked off uh, uh, last night right there in Tanzania. And for uh, Awazi Ikene, he said uh, Anyba will not disappoint uh, Nigerians. I, Isaac, I don't know if you agree with uh, Awazi Ikene. Well, to a kidding, they are not willing to support Nigerians. They are willing to do very well. But the reality will come to play. Emmanuel, on the continent of Africa, Nigerian club sites are one of the poorest in terms of performance. In the last 10 years, what have we achieved on the continent? The best probably is the final stage. We haven't won. Born at those days in the early 2000s, when Eimba was Eimba. When Eimba was the toast of all clubs on the continent. When Enyimba can stand toe to toe with the bigger clubs on the continent, talking of Anhali Zamalek, Ismail, uh, Esperance of Tunisia, and the rest. But now, how is Enyimba run? Enyimba is not properly run to be a top club on the continent. There might be a top club on, uh, in the Nigeria Premier Football League, but on the continent, no. So they might be willing not to disappoint Nigerians, but the reality will come to play on the pitch of play when the quality of play and the investments other club sides have made in their various clubs will show. Because you can't compare a Tiki Mezembe, a Simba FC of Tanzania, and Ali of Egypt, a Sparos of Tunisia, uh, others, to, to Enyimba. All these clubs are well, well managed, well run, well motivated, players well paid than what Enyimba players are even receiving. And let you also know this. I rank Enyimba as the least club on the table of all the clubs who are playing the Super League presently. Eimba is the least in my ranking. Because this is not the Eimba we used to know. Gone are the days of Ojizo Kalo as governor of Abia State, where Eimba was solid. Investment was there. We have players of Eimba playing for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Remember, Damdela Yenuba, Vincent Eyama, all both of them came from Eimba and straight into the national team. And they commanded shirts in the national team. Romanos Ojinta, so many wonderful players. Musa Yusuf, a yeah. wonderful right back. Where are all the likes of these players? These players were not just only good, they were committed. So these players presently now might be committed, but are they good enough? Commitment alone might not take you there. Are you good enough to fight? And remember, if you don't do well as a Yimba in this particular Super League, it might affect the chances of the number of clubs that will represent Nigeria in a larger Super League organized competition coming forward. Yes. Okay, they will be keeping date with uh, Raja Casablanca of Morocco on Sunday. That game will be coming up at uh, the Goswil Akpabio International Stadium in New York. So for Ekene Awaze, he said they will not disappoint Nigeria. And then the game group opener between Simba FC and Al Ali of Egypt and that 2-2 are right there in Tanzania and we have our own uh, uh, legendary uh, uh, perpetual one coach our former super falcons uh, uh, player at the opener in Tanzania so it ended 2-2 and for Enyuba they will be keeping a date they will be uh, tackling uh, the Raja Casablanca of Morocco on Sunday at the Goswil Akwabio International Stadium, right there in Akwabio State. Okay, let's uh, leave that story and quickly um, go straight to Europe. One man is talking. Luxor says 
Victor, our own former Super Eagles player, Victor Moses, is one of the toughest forward he has ever come to uh, face to face with. He has played against the likes of Lionel Messi, Mbappe, Neymar, but Victor Moses was one of the toughest forward he has had to uh, face in his football uh, career. That is coming from Luke Shaw, the Manchester United uh, left back. Uh, Player. Now, Isaac for Luke Shaw, he said uh, Victor Moses was one of his toughest opponents. At uh, the age of 17, when he was in Saturday, he came up against uh, Victor Moses in an FA Cup uh, uh, competition. And uh, after playing against Moses, uh, the likes of Lionel Messi, Lionel Mbappe, named the big stars. And then he, uh, later he played against Ronaldo when Ronaldo went to. Where Ronaldo was uh, in Madrid. Now, uh, he said one of the biggest uh, star uh, out of all of them, Moses Simon was one, uh, I beg your pardon, not Moses Simon, now Victor Moses was one of the toughest he had to play against. Then he was just a 17 year old boy in Saturday. What do you expect from a 17 year old those days against a Victor Moses that is blistering, has a blistering pace, very strong? and very precise with his crosses. That was a player that I was not very happy when he left the Super Eagles of Nigeria, because he still has a lot to offer. But you need to respect their decisions, you know. He knows what he, he, knows what he saw and decided to call it quick. Not every player will be able to play in an atmosphere that is toxic. Now, for Luke Shaw, at 17, playing a Victor Moses with a fast pace, who knows his onions. Remember, Victor Moses was one of the fastest and precise crossers of the ball in the league. And especially when he even now went to Chelsea and was deployed to play the right back, right winger position for Chelsea. He was very wonderful. I think that was the best of Victor Moses we saw in his career. And uh, even bigger clubs like Inter Milan were looking out for him at that moment. So I would not uh, be surprised because look sure at 17. Facing a difficult player like that would make it difficult for him. I would not make him to really forget that, uh, you know, a counter and all any other counters he has made with Victor Moses. But the present Victor Moses will not give uh, the present Luke Shaw that kind of serious edit again. Because if you look at the kind of players Luke Shaw has grown up to face in his career, there are difficult, more difficult players he has faced than Victor Moses. But at 17, facing a Victor Moses that was also very powerful very tricky, that his courses is very precise. So I uh, will agree with Luke Shaw there that this was the greatest or the most difficult player he faced. Okay, you agree with Luke Shaw. Okay, let's uh, see stay in Europe. Like I said, I said we're going to talk about a lot about uh, uh, the women on the show on uh, weekend sports. Uh, but before we talk about the Champions League women's uh, uh, draw that happened last night, well, this news uh, came out and uh, for the World Cup winner, um, Gome, Papu Gomez has been banned for two years uh, because of drugs and um, he related that uh, taking uh, his uh, children uh, sickness uh, syrup and uh, he didn't get some sleep and he, instead of him to consult with Sevilla's doctor then he was in Sevilla before the World Cup in Qatar he decided to take his children uh, sick syrup and now it has landed him in trouble Isaac uh, it looks funny though but uh, not a good one for Papu Gomez Very funny, because after this crime has been committed, most of these players come up with funny, funny excuses. Some will tell you it is in the tea they took. Some will tell you it is in the Amala they ate. Some will tell you it is in the Agbo they took. They never knew that the Agbo they took contains uh, such uh, prohibited substances. But you as a footballer, as an athlete, you know that you are under the watch eyes of anti-drug agencies. You are an example to others. You must always be very careful careful of what goes into you and what comes out of you. Very careful, very careful. Unlike in Nigeria where we don't care, we take everything because there is no doping. Thank God the MPFL has introduced doping this season and it will be happening this season. But in the MPFL, we have players who take all manners of things, drink all manners of things even before games. So for Papa Gomez, this is not an excuse. Uh, the fact is he has uh, crossed the line and he has been banned deservedly because he, he, I don't even know why you go and take your children, sit up. If you can't be sick as an elder, and the next thing you consider is a child's medicine or syrup. No, that is very wrong. 
you, you won't expect a child you know, to even work for you as an elder because when you go to the pharmacy, you want to buy a medicine, they ask uh, for what age? That's because we have something working for us differently. So I don't really buy that excuse. He's giving. Uh, he must have understood what he did and thank God he has accepted uh, the ban. He doesn't have a choice. He has to accept it. And two years, not good for his image, not good for his career. The question is, after returning from this two years ban, what next for Papa Brothers? Yes, what next after returning from this uh, ban? He's with Monza, and Monza have been notified of that issue. In Italy, he just uh, uh, signed for Monza when, after he left uh, Sevilla uh, last season. But let's see if he's going to appeal uh, that ban. I told you we're going to talk about the uh, women on the show uh, this lovely weekend. Okay, let's take this one. The draws came out after the second round of qualification was completed within the week, and the draws came out on Friday. I'm happy because uh, we have Nigerians also playing in the Women's uh, Champions League, not the guys alone. Now, the Women's Champions League draw came out on Friday, and Matt Watering uh, group, uh, uh, let's see, uh, from Group A, we have uh, in Group A, Barcelona, uh, FC, uh, Rosengard of uh, Norway, Benfica of uh, uh, Portugal, where we have Christy Uchebe and Eintracht Frankfurt of Germany. Group B housed uh, Leon Slava Prague, one of the um, the highest winner, as in the most winner of the Women's Champions League. That is Leon. They are in Group B alongside Slava Prague. We have Saint Paulin, uh, Saint Poten, and then SK Brand. In Group C, we have Bayern Munich ladies. We have PSG. We have Romans. We have Ayas. In Group D, we have Chelsea, Real Madrid. BK Haken and Paris FC, where our own Chiamaka Naduzi uh, will, be, uh, will be manning the sticks for Paris FC. She was fantastic all through the qualification. They took out two top teams, Arsenal ladies and then ladies uh, from um, Germany, that is Wolfsburg. And she was instrumental to their qualification, that is for Paris FC. We also have Christo Chebe, we have Assis Atoshola with uh, uh, Barcelona, Christo Chebe with SL Befinka, and Chiamaka Naduzi with Paris FC. These three ladies are super falcons regular and they will be right there in Addis Ababa when we, have, when we are going to keep a date with the Ethiopian ladies. And for Paris FC, I'm particularly happy for Chiamaka Naduzi, Isaac. Well, very happy for her because her heroics in the qualifying stages before this group stage made rounds. It was something that was worldwide. We saw her chances, especially against Arsenal. And what she also did against Wolfsburg, she has been very great. If she is not an African player, probably bigger clubs will have been looking for her by now. And I think uh, for, I'm seeing a very difficult group in Group C made up of Bayern Munich, PSG, Roma, and Ayas than every other group. Uh, because uh, Bayern Munich and PSG have been very strong in women football. They have done very well. And you expect that they will light up this group C very, very well. And for Chelsea, they have been very, very good in the uh, women Super League. Talking about the uh, Women's Football League in England, they've been doing very well. Real Madrid has not been that so powerful when it comes to the female football. But Paris FC, I'm trying to give them a chance in this particular group D to qualify probably alongside uh uh, Chelsea. And for Group B, Lyon, as you said, they've been a powerhouse, strong powerhouse from uh, France, uh, stronger than even PSG when it comes to women football for France. Uh, I don't see them having a problem in Group B. And for uh, Benfica, where Uchebe is playing, uh, let's hope that they were able to hold their own against uh, Eintracht Frankfurt. That is another very good team uh, coming out of Germany, women group team coming out of Germany. Then Barcelona as usual. They've always got into either the semi-final or the final in the last few years. So it, it's going to be a good one. And kudos to the Nigerian ladies who are going to play in this uh, Champions League final group stage. Wazizato uh, Shola, Ochebe, and Chema Kanadozi. I wish them well, especially Chema uh, Kanadozi, to continue to prove that not just do we have outfit players who are good, we also have goalkeepers who are wonderful on the continent of Africa and Nigeria. Yes, good goalkeepers who are on the, in Nigeria and in the, on the continent of Africa. Now we are going to go straight to the league fixtures. We have uh, fixtures that have been lined up from the Nigerian Premier Football League down to Europe. Now we will start uh, with the Nigerian Premier Football League. But before we take the Nigerian uh, Premier Football League fixtures, let's just have uh, two uh, video one or two of Nigerian Premier Football games uh, that went down last season. Let's just have some highlights of those games uh, uh, in the Nigerian 
Premier Football League. Yes, uh, those are some highlights of uh, the Nigerian Premier Football League. Uh, we saw the game between Abia Warriors and Plateau United and that of Remo Stars uh, against the uh, shooting stars of Ibadan. So let's begin from the Nigerian uh, Premier Football League where fixtures have been lined up for March uh, Day 4 with a lot of mouth -watering, uh, watering fixtures and we have uh, the biggest match of the weekend, shooting <laughs> uh, shooting FC, uh, that is uh, the newly promoted uh, sporting, I beg your pardon, sporting of Lagos against Rainbow Stars of Ikene. That is uh, the, mat the matches uh, that have been lined up for this weekend. We have Doma United against Eniba. We have Lobby Stars and Abia Warriors. We have Ninja Tornados for Bay against uh, Bayesa United. Aqua United will be looking for their first win of the season when they be at home to take on shooting stars of Ibadan. We have Gombe United. We welcome Benden Lishoranza uh, of Benin, their first away game of the season. We have Heartland of Uwere against uh, Casina United. Kano Pillars, uh, we keep a date with Rivers United FC. These two teams are champions of the, former champions of the Nigerian Premier Football League. We have uh, Quara, Enugu Rangers will be uh, at, uh, straight in the Loring against uh, Quara United. Plateau United will welcome Sunshine Stars, uh, Sunshine Stars of Akure. Like I told you, the Southwestern Derby will be between Remo Stars and Sporting of Lagos. And Sporting of Lagos is sitting comfortably uh, after three games uh, on the Premier Nigerian Premier League uh, table. So these are some of the fixtures uh, for the Nigerian uh, Premier League. Okay, let's let's leave uh, Nigerian Premier League and go straight to Europe where we are having one of the biggest games. We will start with the EPL. Let's have the EPL fixtures. Like I said, you have the opportunity to call on the show uh, to make your own contributions. Now let's look at the EPL fixtures for this weekend. We have uh, uh, the uh, Messi side derby. Liverpool uh, will be at Anfield uh, to take on Everton. Uh, Wolves will travel to keep a date with AFC Bournemouth. Burnley will also be on the road to Brentford. Manchester City will play Brighton. Newcastle United uh, will welcome Crystal Palace. Nottingham Forest will be up against uh, Luton Town. They will miss the services of Ty Wawone and Olaino. Chelsea will be at Stamford Bridge against Arsenal. Sheffield United will battle Manchester United and Aston Villa will play West Ham United. Okay, like I said, uh, you, can, we, you can, can make your contribution on the show. Now, the game between Chelsea and Arsenal, that is the star match of the week. Now for Chelsea against uh, Arsenal, it's going to be a cracker. We know it's a London derby. What do you think about this particular game? Chelsea will be taking on Arsenal at Stamford Bridge. With the way things have been for Chelsea at the since the beginning of this season and for Arsenal who has been firing uh, since the beginning of the season, 
What do you think is going to happen at Stanford Bridge this evening? That match is 5 p.m. Nigerian time. Who is going to win? Who is going to take all the three points between these two teams in the last seven games? Chelsea, uh, in the last uh, seven games, Arsenal have won six of the last seven games between them and uh, uh, Chelsea. So are they going to continue that record? Let's see. Make, let's uh, have your thought. You can call into the program. Let's hear your own contribution. We've talked a lot on the show. On the show, we've uh, talked about the African Super League, Enyiba, that the, 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 the striker saying they will not disappoint. And a lot has gone down on the show. Let's hear your contribution. But for the star match of the weekend in the EPL, Chelsea against Arsenal, who's going to take all the three points right there? Uh, in Stamford Bridge. We wait your call as we progress on the show. Okay, let's have uh, the other fixtures in Europe. Let's have uh, the Syria A fixture. Syria A games are also lined up for this weekend. Uh, now we, we know a lot of have been going on in the Syria, Napoli, and the rest of them. So let's have uh, Syria A fixtures. We have uh, Hellas Verona against Napoli. We have Torino taking on Inter Milan. We have Sassuolo against Lazio. We have Roma. Uh, we take on Monza. We have Bologna against Ferrosononi, Salatana against Cagliari, Atlanta and Genoa and then AC Milan against Juventus. That is another big game in, in the Italian <laughs> Serie A. So you have the opportunity to make call on the show right now. Call in. Let's have your pause on the game between Chelsea and Arsenal and that of uh, AC Milan against Juventus. Let's hear your contribution. A lot of Arsenal fans, a lot of Chelsea fans. Okay. Hello. Your name and where you are calling us from. I'm calling from, I am Zelana Alkar. My name is Zelana Alkarsim. Let's hear that name again. I'm Zelani Alkarsim. Alkarsim, okay. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Ron Local Government, Jigawa State. Okay, Jigawa State. How is Jigawa State this morning? Uh, we are going fine. We are going clearly. Okay. Now let's hear your contribution. Chelsea against Arsenal. Yes, as my contribution to watch uh, Chelsea Arsenal here yeah, is, I maybe, I, hello? Hello, I can hear you, go on. Are you there? Okay, if you can call us back, call us back, please. Uh, the number is on your screen uh, to, 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 to call in so that we can hear your contribution. Chelsea against Arsenal, AC Milan against Juventus in the Italian Serie A. Let's hear your own pause. Uh, you, you, we have Chelsea fans, we have Arsenal fans scattered all over Nigeria. So let's see Chelsea fans calling. Let's hear you. Uh, we lost that call from Jigawa. So let, if you can, okay. Hello, your name and where you are calling us from? Okay, good morning. Good morning. Yes, my name is Dr. Labode. Dr. Labode, where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Mopamuru, local government, Kogi State. Kogi State. Okay, let's hear your contribution. Okay, I'm a Chelsea fan, and the match is a, it's a London derby, and I believe Chelsea will carry the day. Chelsea will win by two goals to nothing. Okay, Chelsea will win by two goals to nothing. Quickly, what of that of AC Milan and Juventus? Uh, okay, we lost that. Uh, we lost that call out there from Kogi State. He said Chelsea is going to carry the day. Let's see. Arsenal fans, we are waiting for your call. When Chelsea fan has called and said they will win, are they going to beat? Uh, are they going to beat us, Arsenal at Stamford Bridge? The last seven games has not actually gone Chelsea's uh, Chelsea's way. Arsenal has won six. Just one for Chelsea. Will that dominance continue uh, right there in Stamford Bridge? It's not left to be seen. Okay, let's go straight to the German Bundesliga. We we'll also have a fixture. Okay, hello. Your name and where you are calling hello, us sir. from? I'm calling from Tarawa State. Please speak loud so that we can hear you. I'm calling from Taraba State. Okay, from Taraba State. Your name? Okay, we lost that call there. If you can reach us back, please do. The number is on your screen. The number to call is on your screen so that we can hear your own uh, contribution. Okay, let's have the German Bundesliga fixtures quickly uh, before. <laughs> Hello, let's. 
Okay. We have uh, fixtures in the German Bundesliga. We have FC Union Berlin against uh, VFB Stuttgart. We have FC Freiburg against Bochum 1848. We have Darmstadt against 98. And Darmstadt 98 against RB Leipzig. We have Hoffen against Etran Frankfurt. Wolfsburg against Bayer Leverkusen. The team of uh, our own Victor Boniface. We have Menzo 05 against Bayern Munich. And FC Klon against Mönchengladbach. Gladbach. And then Hidehem 1846 with Taco. Oxford. We also have fixtures in League One. Let's have League One fixtures quickly as we wait for your call to make your contributions on the game between Chelsea and Arsenal. Okay. Hello. Your name and where you are calling us from? My name is Bashir Mohamed calling from Yola, Jimeta. Jimeta. Okay. Adam Bashir Oxford. Mohamed from Yola. How is Yola this morning? Yola is fine. The weather is clear. Okay. Clear. All right. Let's have you your contributions on the games. Uh, Chelsea, Arsenal, AC Milan Juve. Yola is fine. Chelsea against Arsenal. What's your contribution about that game? I have a take in respect of uh, Chelsea. Okay. Hello. Okay, we lost uh, that call right there from Yola Mohamed. If you can call us back, please do. We want to hear from you. Okay, hello, your name and where you are calling us from? Okay, my name is Ibrahim Amara. I'm calling from Meduguri. Okay, from Medu State, Ibrahim. Let's hear you. From Meduguri, right. okay, I beg your pardon. From Meduguri. How is Meduguri this morning? Meduguri is fine. Okay, let's have your contributions. Okay, my contribution is regards to Chelsea and Arsenal uh, match today. And uh, I'm not I'm not a fan of all the all the two teams, but uh, I'm hundred percent sure Arsenal is going to defeat uh, uh, Chelsea because uh, Arsenal is the most strongest team now in the Premier League. If Arsenal can be able to defeat uh, Manchester City, I think that's no doubt today. The results will be the same. Okay. Uh, Arsenal will defeat the Chelsea. Okay, Not right there. Saffron will buy. The quality of the players, especially they are in the form. Martinelli, uh, Gabriel Jesus. I don't think uh, Chelsea will going to uh, get something out of this uh, match. Okay. By how many goals are they going to win? Uh, I, I think uh, uh, Chelsea will win by two goals. 2-1. Okay, 2-1. That's my prediction. Uh, okay, 2 1. In favor of Arsenal or Chelsea? In favor of Arsenal. Okay, in favor of Arsenal. 2 1, that game will end. Okay, thank you from Meduguri. Uh, <laughs> he has said uh, uh, Arsenal will beat Chelsea 2 1 in Stafford Bridge. For the last seven games, both these both teams, uh, both teams have played. Arsenal have won six. Chelsea just winning one. Okay, let's see what happens if that dominance will continue. Okay, let's go straight to League One and have League One fixtures because actions are also resumed after the international break in the in League One. So let's have uh, the League One fixtures quickly. We we'll also have games lined up. Okay, let's have a League One fixture. We have Paris Saint Germain against Strasbourg. Nice we take on Marcel Laurent. We we'll play Rennes. Lee. Uh, Lee Luxley will play Brez. We have Nantes against uh, Montpellier. We have uh, Nantes against Montpellier. Toulouse will play Rams. Monaco will play Mets. And Lyon will take on Clermont, uh, Clermont Foot uh, in Ligue 1. These are some of the fixtures lined up for this weekend in Ligue 1. We know the international break. Okay. Hello, your name and where you are calling us from? My name is Abubakar Mohammed. I'm calling from Sokoloka, I'm in Bauchi State. Okay, from Bauchi State, Abaka. Welcome to Weekend Sports. Let's have your contribution. Um, I think uh, I'm an Arsenal fan, and I know Arsenal will beat Chelsea well, well, because Arsenal are the general of England now. Okay. By how many goals? 3-1. Three, 3-1. One. Three, one. Three, one in favor yeah. of Arsenal. Okay, somebody said 2-1. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm 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 okay, what of the game between AC Milan and Juve? Um, AC Milan will defeat Juventus. Okay, AC Milan will beat Juventus by how many goals? 2-0. 2-0, okay. <laughs> Thank you for, uh, for calling in on the program. Let's hear your own yeah. contributions about uh, the game between 
uh, Chelsea and Arsenal in the EPL. And also we have AC Milan taking on Juve in the Italian Serie A. The international breaks are over. And also we have uh, one of the biggest games in the MPF. Uh, that is uh, Sporting of Lagos taking on Remo Stars of Ikene right there at the Ikene Stadium in Ogu State. So that's another big fixture in the Nigerian Premier League. Call in and let's have your contributions in all of these uh, fixtures that we just... Okay, hello, your name and where you are calling us from? I am Dixon Uche. I'm calling from Bida, Niger State. Okay, Dixon Uche from Gida, Niger State. How is Niger State? This morning we have uh, a guest on the Zoom from Niger State also. So how is Niger State? Abida this morning is sunny. The weather is sunny. Okay, the weather is sunny. Good one. All right, let's have your contribution. All right. Uh, no doubt, Asma is a better side at uh, this period. But Chelsea, football game, you don't interpret it like that. Chelsea is going to surprise Asma by 2-1 two, one, two, one win. Okay. And uh, AC Milan will win Juventus at 1-0. Okay, AC Milan, Juventus 1-0. Uh, Chelsea, we beat us now 2-1. All right, thanks for calling in on the show, and God bless you. Thank you very much. God bless you, too. Okay. All right. Let's go back to Isaac Omidiji quickly. And now, Arsenal Chelsea, what is your take on this particular game for the weekend? And also, you will talk about Remo Stars taking on Sporting of Lagos because we cannot leave our own. Yes, definitely. Let me start even from uh, Sporting Lagos and Remo Stars. These are two clubs that are privately run, privately owned, and play almost the same pattern of football, boastful, progressive, and attacking like football. They have young managers, managers that are trying to carve a niche for themselves. And these are two sides that we should watch out for. In the nearest future, they will dictate the pace. They already dictated the pace and encourage other privately run football clubs in Nigeria to believe that they can be on the top of their game. And for Chelsea, Arsenal, you see, pr prior to this game, Arsenal has been on the ascendancy. Chelsea has not. But this is a derby. This is a game of two big clubs. So you don't easily just look at what happened in the last few matches and use it to judge what will happen today. Today, Chelsea might decide to rise up to the location because what I'd like you to know, these are two big clubs. If the players understood they are playing for two big clubs, then it's going to be worth watching. And I see a draw here, neither a victory for either of the sides. And for today, I will say I'm a Chelsea fan for the game. Okay. Uh, Arsenal and Chelsea. What of uh, the game of AC Milan and Juve? Oh, that is a great game in the Italian Serie A. And for Juve, they've not been doing very well. Uh, AC Milan have been very good, very solid. Apart from the massive defeat in the hands of Inter Milan 5-0 in the season, they've been wonderful. So yeah, I see giving them the day, but probably a slim victory of either 2-1 or a 1-0 victory. Okay, that one or a one or draw. Okay, let's take quickly take the last caller on the show before we go quickly. Let's see the lucky person who will call in on the show. Let's have your contribution. Chelsea against Arsenal, AC Milan against Juve. Okay, hello, your name and where you are calling us from quickly. Okay, we lost, uh, we lost that uh, caller right there. All right, let, let's uh, quickly uh, tell you that uh, the game between AC Milan and Juve, that will be in the Italian Serie A. Ch Hello, your name and where you are calling us from? All right, uh, we, 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 we lost that call right there. All right, Isaac, um, thank you for all you've done on this show. Thanks for the analysis and for Arsenal Chelsea. Go out and enjoy yourself when you watch that game. Remo Stars against uh, uh, shooting, uh, Sporting of Lagos, I beg your pardon. And a lot of fixtures in the Nigerian Premier League. And then in Italian Serie A, EPL, Ligue 1, Bundesliga. We have Nigerians players scattered all over abroad. Go and pick any of the games to watch. Isaac, thanks for joining me on the show Weekend Sport. Thank you very much, Manuel. All right, that is where we leave it on Weekend Sports on Trust TV. I am Emmanuel Fashemi. Thanks for watching.